The old gas axe is a pretty handy tool. There's a lot of tricks to it too, but what if you don't want to even get into those tricks? You just need to learn the basics. This video right here is how we're going to cut out all the mistakes with your cutting torch. So check it out. As far as most common mistakes with a cutting torch, it's always going to come back to this point first, our bottles. If you're brand new to oxyacetylene or oxyfuel cutting, this can be extremely intimidating. I've taught a lot of people how to set up torches and they're always just terrified. I can go through this entire thing for them and then as soon as I hand the torch to them, it's like they forget everything. You should come up on a setup that is completely pressure free. There's nothing in the regulators. These bottles are full, but there's no pressure anywhere outside of the bottle. So we should be able to walk up on that and we open up these bottles. We got a full bit of gas right here on the top and then we can set our pressure. They say you can open it up all the way. To me, that just takes a long time. I just get it open, open enough. The acetylene, we wanna open it like a turn and a half, two turns. If there's some sort of danger, we can turn it off quickly. But now that we got pressure into the regulators, we gotta pressurize the hose. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this knob and this is gonna start getting that gas pressure for us. It will get up to about 25. You wanna be definitely looking at your cut charts as far as what you're cutting on and what tip size you have. We have videos on all that stuff to explain tip size and also what kind of metals it can cut. We've got a lot of videos on OxyFuel already, but the biggest thing is when it comes to cutting with stuff is getting that proper settings. I usually go with about a one to three ratio. So if I'm about 30 PSI here, 10 here is plenty probably way more than you need. It'll say that you probably can set your fuel at about six. So we'll turn this knob here to about six, seven, eight, somewhere in there, that's gonna get working. But we gotta get our working pressure. So we gotta open up these valves so that we can make sure while gas is flowing, we have that exact number on the dial while gas is flowing. That needle's gonna drop on that regulator when you open that valve. So it's important to set it just a hair higher. We've got this Victor torch here and I'm just gonna go over some of the bits. It's a pretty simple thing. You only got a couple knobs on here. Some torches only even have just two knobs. They may not have this one up here. You can see what's coming in is the oxygen and the fuel into the end of the torch. Fuel's always gonna be left-handed thread. Oxygen's always right-handed thread so you'll never be able to mix them up. You'll also notice a little bit right in here, right in between, these are some fancy quick connects. Very handy, love a quick connect. Quick connects are life. Doesn't do anything for the effectiveness of the torch. This right here does. This is your flashback arrester. This is just a safety protocol so that we don't have any fire backfires that come into the torch and back into the bottles. That sounds extremely scary. Uh, and it's something that a lot of these things from this end of the torch all the way back have safety features, including into the regulators. So we shouldn't really have that even without this. The more you add, the more safe you are. If we move down the torch, you know you got your fuel and your oxygen valves and then this is an oxygen valve and this is an oxygen lever. These all kind of are all oxygen, which is a little confusing. I always just take the one down here and just leave it wide open. This is going to do almost the exact same thing as this here. We're going to use this to set our flame after we get the fuel added. And then of course, this is the lever that puts all that oxygen, pushes it right through the center of this tip here as the outside holes are for preheating where the fuel comes out, the inside hole is where that oxygen comes out so that we can get that reaction and cut through steel. Remember that what we're cutting is gonna really depend on what pressures we're gonna use. The thickness of metal, the size tip, will tell us what pressures we should set. All right guys, so I've got about 25 PSI on my oxygen, and close to about seven or six PSI on the fuel right now. And then we've got a number one tip cutting three eighths plate. All we're gonna do when it comes to lighting this torch, which is always scary for the first time, this fuel valve, crack it. Barely crack it. Barely crack that little valve so that we can light the torch. See how little of a flame that is? That's what you're looking for. All them carbon parachuters flying up in the air. We don't wanna see those guys. We wanna get a little bit more fuel, a little bit more fuel added into it, into it, until we start seeing that black smoke dissipate. Once that black smoke is gone, then we can start adding that oxygen. But that's enough fuel right there. You don't need to keep going right at that point. See how we're really getting violent with it and we're blowing off the tip back there? We don't want that. We want to reel back till we see that smoke. And then just until that smoke starts to go away, that's when we're done with the fuel. Now we're going to slowly turn that oxygen. Watch what happens when I turn it quick. Normally those things freaking snap off or something, right? We're gonna slowly add that oxygen 
until we're going for a neutral flame, okay? Right now, you see how long of a feather we have on this torch. Right now, we have a more of a carburized flame. There's not a lot of oxygen in it, right? So there are reasons to have those carburized flames. If you guys have a good reason why you use a carburized flame on your torch, whether it's for brazing, welding, cutting, let us know in the comments below. But we want to keep going past this carburized flame and get into this neutral zone. As that feather shortens up, you're gonna start seeing those little cones, those little preheating tips where that fuel is coming out of. You'll also notice a line right in the center of this flame, right in between that. That's that little bit of oxygen that we're adding. Now, if we go past the neutral flame, those tips get very, very, very sharp and it starts to get a really loud hiss. We know that we're at an oxidized flame. I'm not sure why anyone needs an oxidized flame, but again, if you're using that on a daily basis, I'd like to know why. We're gonna reel that oxygen back until we see that neutral flame again. You can also give yourself a little bit of a tap with that lever. This is how I set it quick. I see that lever, those feathers are real long. I'm gonna hold that lever, set my oxygen till those get shortened up. I'm right there. So let's do it one more time really quick. Crack the valve, light the torch, turn it up till you don't see any smoke anymore. Turn the oxygen slow. Once you start getting close, go ahead and hit that lever. There, set, we're ready to cut. All right, now for some fundamentals. We're starting your cut, right? We wanna get everything nice and warm on the edge. If you're working on some thicker metal, I would say anything thicker than a quarter of an inch, probably give it a little bit of preheat. It's not gonna hurt. I would say no preheat on a material can make for a much rougher cut. Now, one thing you don't wanna do, if you want a nice face full of metal, get to that edge of that cut where you want and get too much of that plate. We wanna get just the edge of that sucker nice and warm if we're coming in from the edge. So if we come in almost a whole torch width and try to punch into that, it's more likely you're gonna get a face full. All you need to do is get that little edge started and you can cut. Now, just like welding, torch cutting, you need to maintain a height, a travel speed, a work angle, all those things. Same thing with restarting. We want a proper restart. We're gonna go right where we stopped. I would say that we're gonna be trying to keep this piece of metal so we can damage this one and then work back onto our line. Get this side of that kerf hot, punch back in, do all the damage over here, and come in with your proper torch angle and travel speed. That way you don't have it on the part that you're trying to keep. When it comes to all these variables, as far as travel speed, height, we're gonna try those next. So we're gonna start with messing up some travel speeds. I think a lot of newbies are a little timid and they don't necessarily see what they need to see and they wanna make sure they get it cut, so they go pretty slow. And you're gonna see just a whole lot of puddling, like really a, a big puddle, and, and you'll see that everything stays molten so much longer and you'll usually see it snap back together. It's probably gonna make things for a much drossier cut. It's also slower, you're costing yourself time, gas, and you can move at a much higher rate of speed. So we're gonna try to just cut super, super duper slow and see what this cut looks like. Definitely cutting, but it's just kind of blah. So a slower travel speed, not only is gonna put more heat into the part, it's gonna take you more time, and it always kind of leaves a little bit of a rounded edge at the top here. That top edge right next to those flames just stays so hot, and I'm actually surprised we didn't get as much dross on there as I thought we would get, but we can cut at a much higher rate of speed because we have the proper settings, we have the proper tip, everything's ready to go. Now what happens if we cut too fast? This plate's already warm, we don't need a preheat. Obviously we're not gonna cut if we try to do things too early. See all that splashing and all that kicking back out of that cut? That's trying to jump in too fast. Now, if I'm in it, I'm already in that cut and I start getting too fast with my travel speed, obviously it's gonna kick me out of that cut. You're really looking for that highest rate of travel speed, just like we saw on our plasma cutting video of how we can get a dross free cut with our plasma torch. It's the same concept. So we see we're starting off slow, then we're gonna increase that travel speed. You can see that the heat input is less now. Now we're gonna be going a little too fast. Dang, we were able to go really fast there at the end, but I don't think that we got through it.
you got to be patient with this process. And obviously, if you cut way too quick, you're not going to get all the way through. You're going to make more of a mess. If we flip this over, you can see there's a lot more crap, a lot more dross on the back side of this plate. All that stuff is just from not having a proper travel speed. This is going to pose a huge problem too. Not, not that we were in a hurry trying to move fast. It's the fact that now we have to start over. We have to cut through that again or try to get to it or recut it. And then usually if you're just hacking and hacking on a piece of steel, then you really make a mess of things. Proper travel speed is super important. All right, so we're going to talk now about torch distance, right? Just like arc length for welding, we're gonna have the same issue when it comes to oxy fuel cutting. So let's just play with it a little bit. So we're gonna come in at the right distance, which I would say is close to about a quarter of an inch. I judge it usually off those little feathers from the acetylene. We wanna just be right out of reach of those guys to have that proper distance. Now what happens if we get farther away, you'll be surprised just how far away you can cut with the cutting torch. It's, it's almost crazy which gives it a lot of capabilities, right? You can cut from a stupid distance away. Now I'm gonna make sure it's like as clean as having the optimal distance, but you can still cut from quite a ways away. Now when it comes to getting too close, starting off with that good cut distance, and then we start getting too close, we really can't see what we're doing one, and then now you're gonna be messing up your tip. And a lot of times it'll have a lot of pop into it. You have something like that happen to you. It's pretty obvious whenever you're too close. Too far is less obvious, right? As we flip this over, it's almost bananas how we see that how far we can cut with a cutting torch. There's still a little bit of dross there at the further away part, but this process can cut through so thick a metal. And it doesn't know how close it is because it could cut so far as long as you get that oxygen freaking flowing, man, you can cut pretty decent far away. Okay, so up next is gonna be our travel angle. I would say you should be working towards a push angle, if any at all. You can stay right up and down with the torch and it'll cut really good. I would say to compensate for some travel speed stuff, you can give it a little bit of a push and it's all hunky-dory. You can get crazy with that angle and still cut as long as it's a push. Kind of the same concept as how far away can you get. I can still turn that torch way over and cut stuff through. As far as a drag angle, I don't know if I've even ever tried it, because you're not a supposed to, but if we go for a drag angle, I'm sure it's not gonna be the worst of things. It's definitely keeping things hotter on the back side, which may make for a cut that might wanna kinda of snap back together if we drag it too much. Let's try to drag it a lot. You can see it does not wanna have a good straight cut coming into it. The front of that kerf is just not, is not making a good cut. Yeah, we're just making a mess now. If you had to, and you were in a tight spot and it just forced you to have a little bit of a drag angle for a moment, I don't think it's gonna be the worst of things but it's definitely not gonna make for the prettiest cut. Okay, so one of the last things that we're gonna do is I've cooled this plate off. We're gonna go ahead and make a cut right into it with zero preheat. You're gonna notice it's probably gonna have a little bit more fight to it. You can see it's a little wet. So we got it cold, we cooled it off. Now this is 3 8 plate, so it's kinda got some thickness to it. And I'm gonna just try to go cut as fast as possible. Now the thing is, it's going to cut, but is it going to be as clean of a cut? Typically when I uh, notice that I'm cutting with no preheat, that cut can be a little bit more choppy. Not that I can't get it, but the cut seems to be choppy. Now with that cut and even addition of some heat, I always think it just always is a much smoother cut. Traveling too fast or too slow, they haven't really been that bad. I've made a lot worse cuts in my day. And I think it just comes to the fact that we do have the proper settings for this material with the proper tip. So it's kind of hard to make a bad cut when you're set up at least for success. but I've always found a little preheat goes a long way. Always, always, always depressurize stuff. We're
you're not going to leave these bottles open. I don't care if you're in welding school and you're going to be leaving it for the next person. You need to be turning off these freaking bottles. I don't care if the guy's right behind you. They should learn how to set the torch up anyway. Then you're going to go ahead and depressurize. Just loosen these up all the way till they're nice and loose. That means that you've got all the pressure out of them, but there's still pressure in the regulator and in the hose. So you come over here and you open up your valves and bleed out the line. You should do this every single time you get done with your torch. Bottles off, depressurize, bleed the line, hang it up. That way it's a safe setup and ready for the next person to use. Thanks for watching. We can't do this kind of content without y'all. Please get down in those comments. Let us know what you want to see next with any type of oxy fuel cutting or brazing. Go check out all the links we got in our description below from Cayman Gloves to Victor Torches. They got a lot of gold stuff for you to check out. We'll see y'all in the next weld. That is, that's what you're looking for. All them carbon parachuters flying up in the air. We don't want to see those guys. I think I just ate one. Go away. All right.